What's going on guys? Welcome back to Larkin Motorsports TV. Today we are going to be starting episode 11 of LM Built and what better way to start it off than with some baseline dyno pulls on this 2016 scat pack. So I'm just going to go ahead hit the fan and let's hop right into the week. What a way to start my Monday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got Jake's old red beauty here. She's nice and dirty, Dude, just the way he likes it. it. Jake loves a dirty vehicle. Any dirt, anything that's out of place, Put he doesn't Save doesn't her. bother him. Yeah. So, Jake. Sorry, we're gonna clean it. Pollen season. I, I know for a guy like you, favorite season. But we got the Maggie hooked up. It's 5:30, beer o'clock. That's why Josh is beering. So all you haters. We ordered this Corsa exhaust January 5th along with a cold air intake got it last week. we got the cold air intake and someone somewhere premier corsa i don't know i know everybody from both companies is watching the video they actually canceled the order so we just got the exhaust in six months five Literally. months I, i'm talking about corsa and premier i'm putting them on blast it might have been an accident but anyway all right fire it up Guys, I'm just gonna ride with Josh and we're just gonna do a little street tuning. Rowdy machine, brother. It is. This I am the laptop holder. I'm gonna get into boost uh, on one of these side streets. You're just gonna make sure my AFR doesn't go above 12.5 and my timing doesn't go above like 13. Okay. Which it's these two right here. See AFR? Yep. And the timing's right above it. So you just gotta look spark. at those two and just yell at me to let out if it does. You don't want the spark above 13 yeah. while you're in boost. Yep. And I don't want it above 12.5. Sounds good when you're cruising. You can't, you could never even tell, brother. This is a stock unit. Yeah, it got from a light and it's loud as can be. I don't know. His wife is gonna hate us. Yeah. Jake, if your lovely wife is watching, we apologize. What does it mean when it goes negative? The spark. It's that's because I'm going back into like um it's going back into like coast and like uh, idle. So it pull it pulls a negative spark and then it adds spark to try to get idle where it needs to go without fluctuating like crazy. I have to go through and, and sort all that shit out. Usually you just get rid of all the negative. Cause it, it just it just makes it dip too hard. That's why it's stalling. Like you can watch this. Yeah, exactly. And then and then it throws a ton of spark at it to kick, pick it back up and then it goes up too high and then it throws a bunch of negative spark to pull it back down. And then it goes down too low and yep. it's just fighting each other. You gotta kinda smooth it out. Are you ready? <laughs> I 
<laughs> when I was staring at the laptop. But holy smokes. That's 55. He meant 55. You're right at like probably a little bit rich. You're right at like 10.5 to 11.5. Uh, and you, I think you hit eight pounds of boost on that. Okay. Uh, and Spark was like right around 12. Okay. It's a rowdy machine, let me tell you. Not being able to look at the roads is a little scary too. You feel like you're gonna die. How do you do this by yourself? In the yes. <laughs> so sketchy. I hold it right here and I look and drive like this. <laughs> I added like the last run I got into like five pounds and it was it was a little lean so I overcompensated for that and to make it yeah. um, I added like 10% as soon as it went into PE all the way down the past airflow curve so listen to that course is sing though holy <laughs> All right, guys, we just finished the shorty header install on this all-wheel drive charger here. It doesn't have a cat back or anything on it, so I'm probably not going to, you know, throw some revs. It's nothing insane, but it does sound better, and I'm sure the car likes it better without the stock manifolds on there. Got Jeff right here for right here, probably giving me a phone call or something real quick. Anyway, uh, so Jeff just had a quick question on parts. We got Dan's SRT here. This thing looks not you, Dan. I mean, one day you'll, you'll have one, but... I think it looks really good like this. Me and Dan were just saying. One day Dan ain't gonna have a heavy. <laughs> we do, he's gonna have the elephant in there, right? <laughs> we do miss the uh, the donut donut deal, but I personally really like the way the wrap came out on the back. I think it makes the rear end of this car look absolutely nasty. But Dan's just gonna bang out an alignment for him real quick. All right guys, Austin just showed up with his crew rolling in the M3, but look at how nasty this thing looks. And if you didn't know, Austin actually was featured on an episode of Vin Wiki with our boy Ed. That's kind of a, that's, I guess you would say that's a sacrilege or a, a rite of passage, whatever the saying is. Definitely excited to get this thing on the dyno. It is converted into rear wheel drive. So we're gonna be able to throw it on there, but it's a quick look. I'm gonna try and get him to take me for a ride after it's just so we can get it for the viewers. And if you don't know, I'm gonna put all of Austin's information right here, his Instagram and his company, uh, Valvetronic Exhaust, which I'm sure if it doesn't already have it on it, it's not gonna be long before it does. I'm gonna help Josh get it lined up on the dyno. All right, guys, I'm here with Austin himself, the owner of this beautiful R8 and Valvetronic exhaust. I'll make sure to put his info, website, everything in the description. And he was featured on an episode of VinWiki earlier this week or a few days ago. So I'm also gonna include that in the description. He's just gonna go over, uh, you know, why the car's here to go on the dyno and what his plans are moving forward with his own system and whatnot. Well, first of all, let me preface, I look incredibly unprofessional right now, so <laughs> don't strike that against me. So this is our 2014 Audi R8 V10 Plus. We got the car in Arizona, and we're using the car to develop our equal length header project for the LP generation Gallardos, the 5.2 liter R8s, V10s and V10 Pluses of the Gen 1 and Gen 2, and the Huracans. They actually all run the same headers. So we're developing headers for these cars. This car right now obviously has a stock manifolds and it's got an AVR unresonated exhaust. So we're gonna do some baseline pulls. The car has a rear-wheel drive conversion done to it already. So we're gonna get some baseline numbers, do a couple runs, figure out what the car's making now, and then we'll come back in a couple weeks once it has our headers, our full exhaust, and a tune to be able to maximize the gains. And we'll see what kind of horsepower we pick up. So it should be a good project. It's I'm, important to remember. Yeah, no emissions. No it's a, emissions. It's a Tesla, right? Of course. <laughs> Shout out to Elon. But yeah, so we're gonna run on the dyno, get some baseline numbers like you was saying. And then maybe after, if we're lucky, we'll go out for a little joyride and uh, see what Watch it's all about. Watch until the end. Stay tuned. I'm excited to see the after exhaust. I mean, it's going to sound good as is. The after is what we're in it for. This so. car is going to be so loud. Yeah. With, with yeah. the callus headers, dude. It's going to be so... It's, it might be too much. Yeah, I know you guys aren't going to take it easy over there yeah. at Valvetronic, so... I don't want to jump to any decisions here, but you look pretty good in a V10, brother. 
Let's baby blues in a V10? What do you know about it? What do you want? Alright guys, so it took a little longer than we expected, but we had to just take part of the rear hatch apart to get to a spark plug wire because we have a rear wheel drive dyno and since it's a rear wheel drive conversion, the front wheels aren't spinning and it's thrown an ABS code. Typically, you'd have a mechanically linked all wheel drive dyno so the front and rear wheels are spinning at the same speed. Uh, but obviously, we don't have that yet. But Jeff said he's he's getting the loans, he's investing. And Invested enough. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going to let it eat. We're pulling her off the dyno. Unfortunately, the numbers weren't where they were expected to Price be. For but sale. For, for sale. sale. Yeah. But I mean, Very technically, mad. it made just about, you know, with 20% loss from the crank. So they make 552 at the crank. It made 440 at the wheel. All in all, though, it was good to good to get her on the dyno. And uh, I believe now we're gonna go go have a little fun the Larkin way. mind if I hop in? Uh, sure. Gotta have the, take this. Yeah, I was gonna say, you gotta have the Chipotle in the R8. Can I tell this No, keep that. I want that. <laughs> Traction's not off. Let me, I, let me go up the road one second. It's, it's not, uh, traction won't go fully off right now. Really? Gotta drive real quick. Yeah. I can happily say you are the best driver I've ever oh, seen. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> they like us. <laughs> Jeff, I'm gonna need a pay raise. <laughs> It's been a while since we striped the circle and I think it I think it went well. <laughs> shout out shout out to Austin for just being an absolutely nasty driver. What do you think about that? A little swing show. Dude, he can drive, right? Yeah. Alright man. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you soon.
guys. Obviously, it's a little bit loud in there because that Yukon is freaking stupid. But I didn't know, which I told you a few times. So if you don't know, it's because you ain't watching and you ain't listening. And both of those things are okay. Got a Texas Speed Stage 2 cam, uh, stock heads with upgraded valve train. It's got CHE trunnion kit and it has a Magnuson 2300 on top. We got the C10 unit right here. Alrighty kids, it's time. We're gonna do the first startup on the old 416 Pro Charged unit. This, I don't know what it's saying for voltage. Yeah, it looks like it says 11.7, but yeah. obviously not enough. Yeah. It's up to 14.1 this time. Alright. Still going. 14.2. Bucket 14 2. I just wanted to chime in real quick and make sure to remind you about the 2020 Denali raffle that you can still enter until July 4th. We got six weeks until the raffle goes live. And I'm telling you, you're not gonna wanna miss out. The truck has been parked here patiently waiting no miles have been added to it. It has just been sitting here waiting for one of you to take delivery. So do me a favor though, as always, smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, help the boys out. Let's grow this YouTube channel. Let's get monetized, all that good stuff. And click the link down below, right at the top of the description and go learn about our Denali raffle and our veteran repair program. I'm gonna leave you guys for another week, but we'll be back in the next one. Peace.